All right. Looks like we've got Algebra 2, Lecture 10.4 and 10.5, OSA 2A11. The student will determine the value that completes the square in a quadratic trinomial and rewrite the resulting quadratic trinomial as the square of a binomial. Sounds a little bit confusing, but we'll work through and see what all this means. I want to talk about this real quick, a little note. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what we're going to be dealing with. All this a, b, and c denote, in this case, a is the coefficient of the quadratic term, the variable that's raised to the second power. b is going to be the coefficient, the number in front of the coefficient of the linear term. That's x to the first power is a linear term. And this c out here is going to be some number, 13, 14, 72, whatever it is. So A, B, and C are going to be some numbers, and you're going to hear me refer to B quite a bit today in this lecture. Okay, when I say B, this is what I'm talking about, the number in front of the linear term, the coefficient of the X term. Okay, well, here we go. Let's take a look at what we're doing. It says find the value of C. I'm looking for this value. Find the value of C that completes the square. Well, completing the square takes your trinomial and puts it in such a form that it is, when you factor it, you get a binomial multiplied by itself. That's called the square of a binomial. So here's what we're going to try to do. In order to complete the square, we take half of B, whatever B is, here's B is 16, negative 16, and we square it. Take half of b, b divided by 2, and we square it. And that will be the value that completes the square. That will be the value of c. You could put the number right here, and this thing, if I were to factor it, would give me a binomial multiplied by itself, which I'll illustrate later. But right now, we're just looking for the value of c. So here we go. c is half of b squared. So I'm going to say c equals half of b there's b there's half of b so that's negative 8 squared well negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64 so the value that completes the square here would be 64 and if you were going to write that as a quadratic trinomial you just put the value of c right here and this, if I were to factor it, would be a binomial times itself. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. But that's finding C. We just completed the square. This is the value that completes the square. And on some standardized tests, they'll just say, fill in the blank or find the value, the, the unknown value that completes the square. You take half of B, square it, and you're done. If we're talking about a quadratic trinomial in which the leading coefficient is a 1. So here we go. Let's take a look at this one. I want to find a value that completes the square. I'm looking for this value here, or you could say we're going to fill in this blank. So I take half of 21. And I square it. And that'll be a fraction. That's okay. We have calculators. Four hundred forty-one. over 4. And there's our value of C. And if it said write this as a, you know, a trinomial, you put the 441 over 4 right here. 21 times 21 is 441. 2 times 2 is 4. We squared B and we got C. The value of C that completes the square is half of B squared. That's simple. So let's move onward through the fog. You want to, I never write that up there. You don't have to do this, but that just shows you that it does complete the square. If I were to factor this mess, I would get a perfect square binomial, which is what I'm about to illustrate right now. Here it says, find the value that completes the square. So I'm looking for a value that completes the square and rewrite as the square of a binomial. In other words, we're going to complete the square and then factor. Okay. So here we go. I want to 
complete the square here. So I'm going to take half of b. b is the coefficient of the x term, or the p in this case. Take half of that. Square it. This gives me 20, uh, 22 divided by 2 is 11, so this is negative 11 times negative 11, which is positive 121. Put it here. And then we want to rewrite this thing as the square of a binomial. Well, that means we're just going to factor it. In this case, we put the square root of this one here and here. And I would be looking for factors of 121 that add up to 22. Well, that would be 11. 11 times 11 is 121. And they got to add up to a negative 22. So be, and anything multiplied by itself, a binomial multiplied by itself in this case, is that binomial squared, which is what this says. As rewrite it as the square of a binomial, and we call that a perfect square. Okay. So there we go. This is what we were asked to do. We completed the square. The value we were looking for was 121, and then we rewrote it. So if you were looking in a multiple choice scenario, your answer might look like this. Here's the value to complete the square, and here's the square of the binomial. Notice that this value right here is half of b before you square it. Okay. That'll happen every single time. If you want to complete the square quick, or write as the square of a binomial real quick, you just put p here and take half of this one, and you've got the perfect square binomial. To figure out the value of c that completes the square, that makes this a perfect square trinomial, you take half of this one and square it. Okay. So let's do another one here. This one will involve a fraction. So I'm going to complete the square first. 21 divided by 2. That's half of b. I'm going to square it. And that gives me, I just did that up there, I believe, up above. Yeah, 441 over 4. So there's my value that completes the square. And now I want to rewrite that as a square of a binomial. Well, I'm going to learn the trick that I just figured out here. I'm going to use that trick. I'm going to say, well, it's going to be the square of a binomial. I take the square root of this one, put it here. This will be positive, And I take half of this number. And I'm done. So my value of c, if I were looking for my answer in a uh, standardized setting, standardized quiz or standardized test, I would look for the value of c, which it asked me for, and the square of the binomial, the perfect square binomial. That's what I would be looking for. Now I'm going to look, <coughs> excuse me, look and see if I check to see if I've got this right. Uh, 121 p minus 11 squared. And 441 over 4, x plus 21 over 2 squared. Okay. So in a nutshell, if they're asking you to complete the square and rewrite as the square of a binomial, we complete the square by just taking half of this one and squaring it, and that's how we got this. And then to write it as the square of a binomial, the shortcut is to put the square root of this one there, half of this one here, and say squared. And if you FOIL this, you'll get this. Likewise, even if you wind up with a fraction, you take half of this one and square it. 21 over 2 is a fraction. You square that, and that's 441 over 4. And then to rewrite this as a square of a binomial, you open up your parentheses, take the square root of this one, take half of this one and put it here. If it's positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, it stays negative and square it. So 
this binomial, if I were to expand that as x plus 21 over 2 times x plus 21 over 2 and FOIL it, I would get this. Completing the square. You can do this. <laughs>